Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 16 of my design patterns video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the template method design pattern. It is an extremely easy design pattern to understand, and by the end of this, you're going to completely understand it. Like most of these tutorials, it's all self-contained, so if you're just here to learn about the template method design pattern, you're in the right place. And if you'd like to learn about all the design patterns, refer to the link above. So let's get into it. So what is the template method design pattern? Well, it's used to create a group of subclasses that have to execute a similar group of methods. And to implement it, you create an abstract class that's gonna contain a method called the template method. And if you're not getting this, don't worry about it. The code will totally fill you in as well as the UML diagram that's coming up very quickly. So anyway, you create the abstract class that's gonna contain a method called the template method. And the template method contains a series of method calls that every subclass object will call. However, in certain situations, the subclass objects that are formed from this guy are going to be over to override some of the method calls that don't work for him. So let's take a look at the UML diagram. So basically what I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to use a fictional restaurant called the Hoagie Hut and the people that work there are called Sandwich Sculptors. Well, the Hoagie Hut has decided to automate the process of creating sandwiches and they're going to replace all their sandwich sculptors. So it's our job to make it all happen. Now this guy right here, make sandwich, that is is the template method and it's going to execute a whole bunch of different methods and here those methods are cut bun add meat add cheese add veggies wrap hoagie and give it to the customer then what we're going to do is we're going to implement things called hooks now if we want to make a sandwich that doesn't contain meat right here we're going to set this boolean value to false over in one of the subclasses that's going to implement this abstract class called hoagie and we're going to over here say nah we don't want to add meat or veggies or cheese or what have you to our hoagie and that's going to automatically void out all of the methods that are contained within this template method called make sandwich. So let's get into the code and show you exactly how to implement this thing. Okay, so Hoagie Hut wants to replace all its sandwich sculptures. So what are some ways that we can do that? Well, first off, we're going to have to come in here and start implementing our classes that are going to represent our sandwiches. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is not going to be a good way to solve this problem, but I'm going to do it just so that we know how to do it. So let's go in here. Now let's say, all right, we need to make Italian hoagies. Well, the bad way to do this is just to start bouncing around in here and start implementing exactly how we would want to make one of these sandwiches so we could say something like make sandwich create this method here and then say something like cut bun add meat and all the code here is available under this video and you should definitely check it out if you want to completely understand how to implement this design pattern add vegetables add condiments and then wrap the hoagie. Okay, so no matter what type of hoagie we make, and by hoagie I mean sandwich, a submarine, whatever you want to refer to it as, every single one is going to have us cut a bun and wrap that thing up. Now these things, however, are going to differ, and that's going to be one of the reasons why this design here is not going to work. And then what we would do is do something like public void, cut bun, and then do something like system outline the hoagie is cut. And then we would implement all of these methods that are defined up here, down here, and it would, in the end, make itself an Italian hoagie. I think you can see quite clearly why that is not a good idea, because you're going to have to rewrite and duplicate a ton of code, and that just doesn't make sense. However, we have to also think about the problem of what happens whenever this becomes a veggie hoagie. All of a sudden, we are not going to be adding meat, cheese, and maybe not condiments. So what do we do in that situation? That's where the hook part comes in that I talked about previously. So let's just get into this and fix it up and make it look the way it should. So change that back into an Italian hoagie. And then what we're going to do instead is go into hoagie.java and create our abstract class that we're going to build all of our hoagies from. So let's just go public abstract class hoagie and this is going to be our template method and it's declared as final to keep subclasses from changing the algorithm because we know how we want to make our sandwiches and we don't want our sandwich sculptor to have any input at all in regards to how to do so. So what are we going to do? Well we know every single one of our hoagies is going to have a bun. That's not for the customer to determine. No we're not going to put the meat and cheese right into their hand and allow them to eat it that way. And then what are we going to do? Well we're going to define whether our customer 
customer wants meat. Because remember, veggie hoagie is an option, and we're just going to put that there. And then inside of it, if they do want meat, we're going to say, well, add the meat then, and we're going to call that method. And then, just so we don't get lost here, outside of our template method, we're going to start filling in everything. So let's just go abstract, void, add, meat. We're going to force them to implement this method with the abstract term there. And then on top of that, under here, we're going to define boolean customer wants meat and we're going to provide a method that can be overridden however it doesn't need to be so if the hoagie hut decides that most of their submarines are going to contain meat well it makes sense then for this to remain true and then allow all the subclasses to override it if it isn't true and this is referred to as a hook and it's basically just used like i said before if the user wants to override these they can and whenever you're creating all these individual methods inside of here you're going to mark anything abstract whenever you're, you want to force the user to override it and create it as a hook whenever you want that to totally be optional and up to our user. So now that we have the basis of how this is going to be set up, we can come in here and fill in all of our other hooks or options or whatever you want to call them. So we're going to say if customer wants cheese well then add cheese just like that and then we're going to come down here just to keep everything organized and throw that abstract class in here change that to an uppercase and then change this to add cheese and then add another boolean value here customer once and then type in cheese right like that and we're basically going to do the same thing for all of the other potential pieces of our submarine sandwich or our hoagie or whatever you want to call it so we're going to say customer wants vegetables and then come down here and and say add vegetables and then abstract add vegetables and then right here customer wants vegetables and then the final thing that's going to be an option is we're going to come in there and also ask the customer if they want condiments there's that abstract add condiments and then our boolean value right here customer wants condiments and there you are then we can bounce up here and put in a definite so wrap the hoagie is going to be something that definitely has to be done for sanitary purposes and then outside of our template method we're going to define what exactly cut bun is going to do public void cut bun paste in system out the hoagie is cut close that close that and there you go so that's a method that's definitely going to be called and then underneath of our hooks here where we're going to define whether these things are going to be added or not to our sandwich we're going to put in our other definite and that's going to be public void wrap the hoagie and then in that situation we're going to say wrap the hoagie like, like that we can file save that and then this guy is basically set up so now let's go into italian hoagie and use it the proper way with our abstract class so in that situation we're going to go extends our abstract class hoagie and then what's it going to do well let's just get rid of all this because now the abstract class is going to handle making our sandwich and we need to implement some unimplemented methods for this guy so there we are click on that and automatically everything's going to pop inside of there let's scroll back up to the top and this has nothing to do with the template method design pattern but i decided i'm going to have everything in regards to what's going to be on the sandwich set up inside of a string array salami pepperoni capa cola ham so this is going to be the basis of our italian hoagie and then we're going to do the same sort of thing for all the other ingredients that are going to go on this hoagie i'm going to say cheese used in this situation this is real simple provolone i got that in there i'm going to come in here and say veggies used lettuce tomatoes onions sweet peppers and then finally condiments used and that's going to be real simple as well we're just going to say oil vinegar okay so we have all of the things that are you know inside of our italian hoagie so now we need to go into add meat and make sure that everything's generated properly here so i'm just gonna print a little message adding the meat and then i'm going to use an enhanced for statement so we're going to go string meat temporary holding cell for everything that's popped out of our meat used string array system out print 
and we're going to print out meat followed by a space. Okay, so now we pretty much have to do exactly the same thing for all of these other methods inside of here. So for add cheese, just bounce in there, adding the cheese, and then here we're going to say cheese, cheese used, and cheese. And then come down to the vegetable part, paste that in there, adding the veggies, veggie, and then here we're going to type in veggie. And then the last one, add condiments, throw that in there, adding the condiments, condiment, condiments used, and condiment. So there we go. Looks like that's all good. Yep, no errors. So that is going to be the basis of our Italian hoagie. So now we basically have to, I'm just going to copy all this, just save some time, and then jump over into veggie hoagie. This is going to be the guy that's dramatically different. So paste all that code in there, and then I'm going to change this to veggie hoagie. And then down here, we don't have cheese on our veggie hoagie, and we don't have meat on our veggie hoagie, but we are going to have veggies, obviously, as well as condiments. And then, just to keep this neat, because it makes more sense, in this situation, I need to override the customer wants meat and the customer wants cheese. That's found over in hoagie.java, see, right here. So I'm just going to copy these guys and I'm going to override them in my veggie hoagie class that I have here. So instead, I'm going to type in false and then I'm going to type in false here. So overrode those. So now that's going to work properly. And for these guys right here, add meat and add cheese. Well, I don't need them to do anything, but I do need to implement them. So fine. I'm just going to get rid of everything that is inside of them and have them basically do nothing. There we are. And we can do the same thing here. There we are. And then in the add vegetables part, guess what? I don't have to do anything because I already have all those things defined up here. Of course, I could change what's in these string arrays, but I don't see any reason to do that. So we can file save it because guess what? We're done with that. So now all that's left for us to do is to create the sandwich sculptor. This is going to be ridiculously easy. So we're in sandwich sculptor and we're in public static void main. So it's time for us to make ourselves some sandwich is. So I'm going to go hoagie. Just going to create a basic hoagie. And let's say customer 12 comes in and says that they want an Italian hoagie. Well, now we can guarantee it's going to get made the right way. So we're going to go new Italian hoagie like that. And then to have it create it, we're just going to go customer 12 hoagie and then make sandwich which is a call to the template method that we defined inside of hoagie.java. Let's take a look at it. See? Make sandwich. There it is. It's going to create all this stuff for us. That's all we need to do. And then if we have some other customer come in and this customer says, I want a different type of hoagie. I want you to make me a vegetarian hoagie. No problem. I'm just going to come in here. Veggie hoagie. Oops, got to spell it right. There we are. And then make sandwich. Change that to 13. And if we file save that, it's actually, I know, going to print a little bit weird. But I'm going to fix that in a second. And there you can see. Hoagies cut, adding the meat, blah, 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 adding the cheese, and so forth and so on. And then if we want to correct this spacing issue, let me just think here. I'm sort of improv in this. Let's figure out how to do it. What makes the most sense to do it inside of hoagie.java? So let's just jump in there. And what's one quick way we can do this? Uh, we can create ourselves a Boolean. And let's say after first condiment, because we have no idea whether meat or what sort of things are going to go on here. So I'm going to mark that as false. And then what I'm going to do is insert new lines to make sure that all this stuff is broken up right. So, cut bun, da 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 da, da. And then what I'm going to do is, if there is meat on the hoagie, I'm going to come in here like this and mark this as true. And then down here, I'm going to go into the cheese part. Remember, this has nothing to do with the template method design pattern. I'm just fixing a little bit of an issue here. And here, I'm going to throw in that and ask if I've already pasted in the meat part of this. And if I did, I'm going to throw a new line in there. Print, throw a new line. Or I could have just put in print line, but whatever. And then then after that, I'm going to pop this in there. Boink. This can be your homework, figuring out exactly what I'm doing here, if you don't quite get it. I'll save that. And then I'm going to do the same thing here and do the same thing. I can't imagine somebody coming in and ordering a hoagie and just getting condiments, but I guess it's a possibility. And there we are. I'm going to file save that and then jump back over into sandwichsculptor.java. And then we can bounce over here, throw in a print line between each of these guys and execute it. Now it should work perfectly. And there you can see it worked perfectly. Prints out, cut the hoagie, adds all the meat, adds the cheese, adds the veggies, adds the condiments, wraps the hoagie. And then in here in this situation, whenever we don't have meat and cheese, just prints out veggies and condiments and wraps that hoagie. So there is the template method design pattern. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.